You know, it's a casino, but it doesn't have, uh, unfortunately, in this casino, Gulag Mile in America, the, ch the food is not cheap and the housing is not cheap. That's the big difference. Continuum. Well, um, I, I think that there's, I'll put something on the table here for you to consider, which is that the country that was the first into the, into the meat grinder of this huge, globalized, syndicated fraud, it was Iceland. And Iceland, the Icelandic population, the bankers and, on Wall Street. Now, I was in Iceland. As you know, I made a film about this. I was in Iceland, and a year before it collapsed, it's a film on YouTube called Money Geyser. I sat down with bankers in Iceland, and I said, your corona and your economy is about to collapse. And they said, no, no, it's not. That night, I was in a uh, sushi restaurant in a, um, a hotel, Hotel 101 in Reykjavik, and there were these Lehman Brothers brokers, and, of course, I worked on Wall Street for many years, so I struck up a conversation. And they were telling me that they were plotting to crash the corona to make a huge score. And I said, yeah, but the banker here just told me that, you know, this economy is in great shape. You know, it sounds risky. And they're like, no, 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 you don't understand. They've, they've, they've leveraged themselves 10 to 1. The entire GDP has been leveraged 10 to 1. And we've got this global syndicate of short sellers and all of our regular crew. And we're going to take this corona, we're going to take this economy down, and we're going to score huge. And that's exactly what they did. And, and Goldman people, Sachs pilots the entire banking system and policy and has their people at all levels of government. Instead of them being arrested and the nightmare ending, it isn't going to end. It's going to get more and more hellish. And Jack Bauer tortures people to get answers and tortures children. Everybody fantasizes to be a torturer. Now they all get to be tortured or you go get a job as a humiliator and an abuser. And it just gets sicker and sicker and sicker. Well, now in Iceland, uh, they are voting on whether or not to reimburse the U.K. government for uh, millions of dollars that were uh, guaranteed by the bankers on the U.K. savers, $5.5 billion worth of savings that were used to, to fuel the speculative uh, run-up in Reykjavik. And now the U.K. government classified Iceland as a terrorist, for not paying back, for not allowing the citizens to be forced to pay back the, the speculative money that was lost by the bankers. And now uh, they want the citizens to fork over billions of dollars to, for restitution to the bankers and the speculators. And if they don't do that, they're threatening all kinds of uh, draconian uh, measures and destitution in, in Iceland. And uh, the people have been out there rioting in the streets. Because they're being forced to ride in the streets because the bankers are, are putting them out of their homes. They've been, the let me stop you. This is so key. They've been rioting for more than 10 months, taking over government buildings, a very highly educated, low crime rate, some of the most professional people in the world. They have been rioting for coming up on a year. And I remember seeing that at least eight months ago in the London Guardian, like it was normal that that brown used anti-terror legislation to seize the bank accounts of icelanders that had their money in british banks inside iceland and without so for those that want to know just like the homeland security documents that we got that we leaked last year say the real threat to homeland security is conservatives libertarians anti-war people gun owners veterans this whole thing is to rob your bank account max kaiser well, on that front, there was a great piece in ZeroHedge.com website about a little legislation that was just sneaked in a couple of weeks ago, which now makes it uh, possible for the banks to declare that they are not going to honor money market funds, that they can seize money market funds at any time for any reason. Uh, which means, so anyone who's got money in a money market fund in any of the banks, or brokers in the United States. As of the, as of now, uh, the banks can claim that for any reason that they deem appropriate, they can seize those. And accounts. that's just the standard uh, uh, savings account for most people. I mean, the, the little bit of money I've got in the bank because I don't trust the banks, but to run the business, it's in money markets. Wow, you just dropped a bomb on me, Max. What's the headline on that? I want to look it up. It's on zero edge dot. Com is the site, and it's, um, let's see, if you just put uh, seize, money market seizure, money market seizing. Unbelievable. I mean, it just gets, Max, it's clear. They're getting ready to really drop the hammer, aren't they? 
Well, again, it's just you have to understand the model, the business model. You know, I'm primarily a stockbroker and a businessman. You know, I look at this from the money side of the equation. And you just have to understand, you know, for example, from the money side of the equation, going back to when they declared the so-called war on terror, at the exact same time, John Poindexter, who was assistant treasury to the defense department. Tell us about that when we come back. Our country is descending into the most horrible sci-fi tyranny you can imagine. The planet is falling to the terrorists that stage the terror attacks and then fund themselves off of all the security measures they put in. Max Kaiser calls coming up in the next segment. We're going to look at the economy and what's happening there. But continuing, we're bringing up Poindexter wanting to create. This was in the Washington Post. He, he In fact, they tried to launch it. Uh, well, for those that don't know, tell people about it. Literally making terrorism part of the economy. And then I have another question that dovetails with that, because we know about the insider trading on American and United before 9-11. Uh, did you look at the stocks, I haven't done this, of the body scanner companies in the days before Christmas? Let me guess. Uh, I bet some bets were made that the stock was going to go way up. I haven't uh, looked at the, the numbers on that. Uh, let's get back to John John Poindexter for a second. You know, John Poindexter was uh, higher up in the Department of Justice uh, in the military um, in, in the U.S. And um, during this uh, launch of the War on Terror, uh, he they he launched the so-called Policy Analysis Market or PAM, which was going to be an online virtual exchange where people can uh, speculate on the next terror attack. And John Poindexter was saying, well, you know, the point of this is to use the, uh, the markets, which, which are efficient. You know, this whole mantra that markets are efficient, uh, it was, and that's part of the whole casino mentality, is that the reason why everything has become securitized and everything is now a market and the health business is going to be on a market and, and the, you know, the, the, the climate change is going to be carbon trading market. The reason everything is on a market is because there's this belief that markets are efficient. So John Poindexter is uh, saying that, yes, if we only turn terror into an online tradable market, then we would know in advance where the next strike is going to be. And we would prepare accordingly. But, of course, that it, all it does is it gives yet the insiders another way to profit on the terror that they themselves are stoking. You know, they're the, as, the, as Ron Paul has said recently, they are terrorists because we're occupiers, end quote. And so if you're an occupying force and you're causing terror uh, and you're already making billions well, why not add another layer on top of this called the policy analysis market, sell to the public as if you're going to help figure out the next attack, but all it is is you're just making more money on the attacks that you're already creating. Because they always, it comes out, know beforehand and let real attacks take place, but more often than not, they're staging the attack to begin with. Absolutely. I mean, the, it's, it's, it's about making money much faster than waiting around and clipping coupons or 5% or 6% on your money. If you had a chance to make 100% in five weeks, then you'd go ahead and do it. And that's, what, that's what's behind the, uh, all the policies. All the policies in Washington are created by speculators. The uh, energy policies are created by the oil speculators. The health policies are created by the health and insurance industry, which are speculators. They're all uh, basically speculating on the global markets in one, one way or another. The banking industry is certainly all the policies there are created by the banking industry. It's like Enron. Remember, Enron created the energy policies under Bush. That's continued. All the, all the speculators write the policies in Washington in ways that make it easier for them to speculate. They have access to cheap money at the Federal Reserve at near 0% interest rates, and there's no regulatory framework. There's no Glass-Steagall. There's nothing holding them back. They can make all the crazy bets they want. They can invade countries that they know are going to cause certain stocks and commodities to go in certain ways, bank the profits, book the profits. Oh, and whenever they make a mistake, they claim, oh, it's terrorist, and we need to go to the taxpayer to bail us out. So it's heads we win, tails everybody else loses. They've been doing it now for years, and that's why the wealth and income gap in America is so huge. It's never been higher. Even during the robber baron period in American history, they never had a wealth and income gap as high as it is now. It's never been as high as it is right now. This is exactly the situation that existed pre-American uh, war for independence. America didn't want to be under the thumb of an aristocratic occupying royalty. And, but this is exactly the situation today. The bankers are an occupying force of aristocrats. 
that are simply engaging in this casino gulag model where it says they win, tells we lose, and to keep us stupid and, uh, and, and in, in line, they bring in these uh, airport scanners, which are humiliating, which is just a way to create mass depression, and then they feed on that depression, and, of course, they study the drugs to help you treat your dep depression, and, of course, the health industry policies are written by the drug companies who are also speculating. Max Kaiser is our guest. We're going to get into his outlook for 2010 in the economy as things are consolidated and vertically integrated through the Homeland Security Global Dictatorship. It's planetary. We are also going to open the phones up and take your calls at 1-800-259-9231. I'm Alex Jones. Our websites are infowars.com, prisonplanet.tv, and jonesreport.com. Stay with us.